Welcome everyone to Stadium Journeys Obstructive Views, the show where a couple of guys in a couple of countries have a couple of beers and discuss a stadium somewhere in the world and their experiences there. I'm Paul. And I'm Dave. We're excited to be here with you today. Before we get started, please take a second, subscribe to the Stadium Journey YouTube channel, like the video, and leave a comment. If you want to check out all of our fantastic content over at Stadium Journey, Really simple. Just go to stadiumjourney.com. It's all there. So let's get rolling. Dave, what are you drinking today? So today I got something that's not necessarily, it's not a micro brew, not a craft brew, but it's not a big brew. Uh, You've got a Bud Light. N- Although, you know, Yankee Stadium, Bud Light, that's probably. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nope. So I have from Mill Street Brewery. In Toronto, Ontario, I have the 100th Meridian Organic Amber Lager. And, of course, 100th Meridian for my fellow Knuckleheads would know that the 100th Meridian is the song that the Tragically Hip sang about where the planes begin. Uh, but a red lager, kind of Rickard's red-like, and, uh, and you know, it's pretty darn good. And I'm enjoying it. Nice. What do you got? When you were saying Mill Street Brewery, I was like, why does that sound familiar? Oh, yeah, I went to one recently. <laughs> <laughs> As for me, I am definitely in the craft brewery wheelhouse here. I have got very uh, cosmic theme from Revival Brewing in Providence, Rhode Island. I have the Star Child Pilsner. Now, it's not Ooh. Paul Stanley on the cover, but it is kind of like a spacey alien kind of looking with, a, with the funky can. Pretty cool. It's a Pilsner. When I open this, it's very aromatic. I'm like, this doesn't smell like a Pilsner. It smells like an IPA. And it's, and it's a heavy Pilsner. So not exactly my wheelhouse, but I'm still, like you said, I'm enjoying it very much. And uh, Revival Brewing was a big deal when it first opened up. It was one of the first craft breweries to open up in Providence that was minority owned. So um, they've got a fantastic menu. We went and had dinner there after a game one time. Fantastic stuff. But it, it's, it's a big deal in the Providence area. If you were visiting today's destination, we might be drinking a Pinstripe Pills from Blue Point Brewing in Patchogue, New York, because today we are going to talk about Yankee Stadium in the Bronx, New York, home of the New York Yankees. Before we dive in, let's take a look at the stadium vitals. Okay, Yankee Stadium. Actually, technically, Yankee Stadium Part 3. But uh, when this stadium was built, it's very controversial, mostly because of the high price tag. And even today, the, the stadium was built in, I think, 2007, 2008. So it makes it a good 15 years old, give or take, as of the recording of this. It is still the most expensive baseball stadium in the major leagues. Why hasn't it gotten much of a great reaction from fans or from traveling baseball fans overall. So open 2009. uh, Close. I think. Yeah. Yeah. No, pretty close. I think there's some controversy that goes with it as well, because uh, both Yankee stadium and city field were, were sneaky parting um, gifts, quote unquote, by, uh, Former New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani sort of slid those in and got the heck out of Dodge. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and while City Field had a price tag of about what, like four hundred million, Yankee Stadium had a price tag of like two billion. Yeah, uh, I think I I always look at the Yankees. I think you have to look at them with a grain of salt. Like even uh, having been to old, not old old, but just old Yankee Stadium. All right, I had uh, been there too, so that's it, nice. It, it, it did not wow me. It didn't like blow my socks off, but didn't break any new ground. I guess I get it. Like if that's the home for all of that success. Yeah, sure. You're going to like it, right? Why not? I get it. Uh, and let's face it. They, the Yankees have had a ton of success. Now, most of that has not been at new Yankee stadium and the price tag well, hello. I think the other thing was is that the fans were feeling that price tag. And in those first years it was opened, you saw it on television. You saw 
Like the directors had to had to change the way they were shooting the game because there were so many empty seats because they were so expensive. Yes. And uh, if you have um, if you have the opportunity to watch the thirty for thirty, the house that Steinbrenner built, uh, there's some obstructive views out in center field. So there's a, a a big piece of it is when they they're interviewing these bleacher creatures who had. I was going to bring that up. Yeah. Yeah, they had seats in center field forever at old Yankee Stadium, which were pretty darn terrible. They were. I would say. Overall, uh, the old Yankee Stadium was a pretty lousy place to watch a ball game yeah not my not my favorite not at all uh but similar seats they had like the the i forget what it was but it's in center field that could like a balcony just kind of juts out and cuts off yeah. a big chunk of the field and there were a lot more obstructed views good name for a podcast bad experience for a <laughs> baseball player or uh, somebody watching a baseball game for sure so yeah. I think th those were kind of the, the two big things. Like the price tag was really felt by the patrons, I think. And that yes. is this is the Bronx. It's not Los Angeles. You know, you can't find a bunch of celebrities to pay those kind of big bucks during the season. Right. True, true. If, if they get to the playoffs and, and, you know, if they get deep in the playoffs, suddenly Billy Crystal and all of his friends and, you know Jerry Seinfeld and everybody else who's a Yankees fan when they're doing well will will show up and fill those seats, but yeah, you know not so much during the regular season. True, I always look at a Yankee Stadium as a fantastic museum. Too bad it's supposed to be a ballpark. <laughs> so yeah, with I don't want to be all negative about Yankee Stadium because it's not terrible, but it's got some warts. So uh, when you first go in, if you're going to go to Yankee Stadium. You've got to check out the museum that they have there. And you've got to check out the uh, monuments out in center field. So, but to do so, you got to get there right when they open the doors. Yeah. And this is the, this is, I, let's be real. Let's, let's call a spade a spade. We probably should not be doing this review, right? Like, if there's anybody who should not be talking about, about Yankee Stadium, it's a Red Sox fan and a Blue Chase fan. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but but that is my biggest beef with Yankee Stadium is that they have built up this idea of Monument Park in center field. Uh, I've been I've been to the new one once. I've been to the old one once. They're the, similar in this aspect. My wife has just went with my son. So she's been actually three times. Not once have we been able to go to Monument Park. Oh, really? Because you're not there fast enough, right? You have got to get there when gates open, and you've got to go in the right gate. you got to go in the outfield gates. Yeah. Because if you go in the main gates, you got to, then you got to walk all the way around. By the time you get to the outfield, it's too late. Yeah. The, Monument Park is a wonderful idea. It should not be closed 45 minutes before the first pitch. Well, it should why not is be it in now? Because it's not like it's not part of the field anymore. Why do they close it? Who cares? You can't. Um, I actually went there once and took a picture of the field from Monument Park. I had to put the camera way up over my head over the wall, <laughs> so I didn't know what I was shooting. It's not. You could have people in there all game long, and they would not interfere with anything. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I think. I think you know if you compare it to like maybe Tampa, because the Ray Tank is out in center field. Out past center field, and it's open the whole game. You know, mm -hmm. I think I that's not true. I think it closes in like the eighth or something like that. Yeah, but you know, people are going there the whole time. Yeah, and and if this is really if this is really what Yankee Stadium is all about, then it should be open. People should be able to go whenever. Yep. This should be like, you know, one of my big my big beefs with baseball stadiums now is that they've created all these things where people aren't watching the ball game, right? Like all these social areas and bars and whatnot, and they got cornhole and they got music and they got this and that and the other thing. And I don't know why people go to the ballpark to do that. Yeah. This is the complete opposite, right? It's, it's almost like, you know, okay, time's up. You can't go and look at the plaque of, of Babe Ruth. Now you have to go to your seat and watch the game. Uh, and you know, that, that's my biggest beef with Yankee Stadium right there is that should be available 
for the whole game. Yep. It's probably the one place that I'm like, you know what? If I'm going to get to Monument Park, I'm going to have to take a tour. I'm going to have to do the ballpark tour, which I haven't done. I haven't done the Yankee Stadium. Tour. I have done the Yankee Stadium tour. Um, it's a really good one, and you do get good access to the to the uh, to the museum and the uh, Monument Park. But then, you know what? Outside of those two features, nothing really spectacular about Yankee Stadium. It's when they built it. You you mentioned the thirty for thirty, the house that Steinbrenner built. They built it very much to maximize the high rollers at the expense of the average fan. Now, much was made during the construction of the moat. There is literally, I hate using the word literally because it's a superfluous word. Pretty impressive that I use the word superfluous. I did it once. Damn it. Anyway, there is a moat where if you have the uh, certain section, if you're sitting in certain sections, you cannot go down front. You know, when we were kids, and you start, you know, you're in Toronto, so you start in the 500s. I yep. was at Fenway. I started in the bleachers. You work way down. Boom. Oh, empty seat over there. Boom, boom, boom. Before you know it, you're sitting right behind home plate. <laughs> or I remember sitting right behind, right beside the Kansas City dugout talking to Gaylord Perry one game because we had bunked all the way down to the dugout. You can't do that because there is a moat that stops you from going and security guards who patrol the moat. Now, I would say that that is... Not that unique, and th that's been an aspect of Yankee Stadium even in the previous iteration. Okay. So when we went the first time, and we were in old Yankee Stadium, uh, we were in center field. You can't go anywhere else. You can't go and walk in the concourse behind home plate. You're well, you stuck. Can in the one. You can in the new one. You're stuck in that spot. So, yeah, you, you can that that has opened up, but the idea of like limiting, yeah. listen, yeah. you surfs. You yeah, when I, when I was a kid, the bleachers had separate entrances and exits and everything. And if you were at a bleacher ticket, you couldn't get anywhere else unless you were a sneaky kid. But let's um, let's 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 give props to Yankee Stadium for a couple things that we don't often talk about. We've talked a lot about the fatigue, the red brick and the yep. green seat fatigue. Yankee Stadium is not that. Nope, I don't know if great, there's great a cement. red brick in the whole place. <laughs> there is not. I don't. Yeah, I think you're right there. It this this kind of polished marble feel to the exterior, uh, columns, very Roman. The kind Great of, Hall is great. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and you know what? For the evil empire, it fits. Absolutely. Like the gold leaf lettering at the top, Yankee Stadium. Uh, just being called Yankee Stadium. No corporate no cor name. No corporate name to be found here. <laughs> In fact, the original Yankee Stadium was called the Yankee Stadium. It was always referred to as the Yankee Stadium, much like the Ohio State University. Huh. Now, go. it's kind of interesting where they put it because they, they, you know, New York City, where are you going to find land to build a stadium, right? So when it came time where they decided, you know what, we're getting rid of... Uh, Getting rid of the old Yankee Stadium. It's it's like a hundred years old. It's time to get rid of it. They built it right next door. What was right next door to the old Yankee Stadium? Little League Fields. It was a park. Was a park. Yeah. Little League Little League Fields. So what they did is they just flip flopped them. So now where the old stadium stands are Little League Fields. And one interesting thing, if you park over there are some parking garages on the far side of that, so you can walk through the park to get to the stadium. As you're walking, you see the great quote from uh, Bull Durham. Sometimes you win. Sometimes you lose. Sometimes it rains. <laughs> but yeah, have... and a lot is made of the neighborhood that the ballpark is in. Not the fanciest neighborhood, but also not as dangerous and decrepit as people might make it out to be either. I've never, I've never driven there. Um, and it's darn easy to get to on the subway. Just so yes, long as you know the difference between uptown and downtown. <laughs> you know, back in the old days, we used to call those north and south. Yeah. <laughs> but uptown I've always driven. I've, I've always driven, and New York City traffic is a bear. But Yankee Stadium is easy to get to if you're driving as well. Okay. I mean, Yankee Stadium. Did I say New York City? Whatever I said. So, 
yeah, the neighborhood, it's okay. There's a couple of places. It's not where you're going. It's not your destination. It's the Bronx. I've been through the Bronx a little bit. There's some nice areas in the Bronx, despite what people say. There are some attractions. There are some places to go. But, yeah, the stadium, it's big. And it feels, like you said, it feels very royal. But to me, it always it's, feels very dark and cold and corporate is the way I feel. It feels like the seats that I can't afford, I've never sat in the lower, lower bowl. I've always sat in the, I think there are 400s there. I've always sat up there. Lots, lots of different variety. I mean, if you go right behind home plate, which I have snuck to a few times, there's some nice, there's a nice little club section. So you got nice cushion, cushion seats and stuff. And but I don't mind Yankee Stadium. It's not my favorite ballpark, but it's not my least favorite either. Yeah, homey is not a feeling that you're going to get there, right? It's not going to feel cozy. It's not going to feel. It's not going to feel warm. But too you know, damn lots, big to feel cozy. Yeah, there's there's lots of stuff to go and see. There's, you know, displays. Uh, there's a, a an MVP display where they got pictures of every Yankee that's won the MVP. I love that stuff. I wish mm. I wish more places would have stuff like that. Like just, oh, uh, here's a picture of, of this guy who won the Cy Young Award. Or here are all the, the MVPs that played for your team or whatever. That, I love that stuff. Uh, and, and it's usually lost due to advertising. And I guess when, the, when you're the Yankees that... You know, maybe advertising isn't the biggest deal because you could charge that much more for the advertising that you do get. Uh, of course, the um, what what did you call them? The the freeze, the freeze, the classic. It looks like uh, for those who don't know what we're talking about, it looks like a fence, but it hangs at the top of the stadium. Yeah, it's actually it's, yeah. the architectural term or the design term is called freeze. Uh, totally unique. I, I can't say I've seen it anywhere else. And when you look at that, it, it it's Yankee Stadium. Uh, you know, much like, much like Madison Square Garden, you know, you see, you see that that ceiling, you know, it's Madison Square Garden, right? And and I think I think that's a piece of of New York, right? Like they they have that instant recognizability, right? And, and that's and they want that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's for for the evil empire. It's it's <laughs> it, it totally fits, doesn't it? Right. Uh, yeah, everything about the ballpark screams Yankees. What, what, what do you think about what do you think about um, the plaque for George Steinbrenner being four times the sizes of anyone else? If anyone who is watching this was alive during Steinbrenner's reign of terror, it fits the man. <laughs> it does, it, doesn't it? It fits the man. He had an oversized ego. Now he has an oversized plaque. But you know what? There's something to be said since he passed. How many titles have they won? Yeah. Yep. For As sure. we speak right now, they're playing for last place in their division. So Yep. Yeah. And 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 uh and still the posturing, right? Like it's still the Yankees. It's still it's still the talk. Uh all, the, the talk now that, that Derek Jeter is gonna be the next GM of the Yankees and you know. It, it, yeah, it's they move the needle, right? And, and well, we know that sports radio was born in New York, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, could sports radio have lived in New York without the Yankees? <laughs> Doubtful. I know if they talk about the Yankees like six times, they probably talk about the Mets once, right? And and I think, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I don't quite have this right, but I feel that. I feel that New York is is a baseball town. It's a Yankees town. Bigger than the Giants, bigger than the Jets, bigger than the Knicks, bigger than anything else. It just feels like if if New York was to pick one team and they could only have one team, it would be the Yankees. I would have to agree with you there. I would really, yeah. Um, geez, I don't know. How, I, how do I follow up that point? I, I can't counter argue that. <laughs> I, I some of our experience with uh with the people working at Yankee Stadium has not been positive. <laughs> <laughs> I remember we went to, we went once and uh my wife went to buy some popcorn and uh you know the the vendor there said, "Well, I don't have any change." <laughs> well, 
So you gotta not, pay I'm bucks. not buying your popcorn. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah not. Uh, it's it's not the friendly confines. It's not. Oh, no, not at all. You, know, not, you, you don't have that feeling at all. It's you don't have that Fenway vibe, that Wrigley vibe, not at all. It's very and, corporate, and, very corporate to me. Yeah, I. You know what? I don't. Huh, I don't know if I. It doesn't feel corporate. But you know what? You didn't have that at the old Yankee Stadium either. You didn't have know. that vibe there either. You you had the rowdiness that you know the bleacher creatures or whatever whatever they call themselves there. It, it was a certain place, and you know I. I'm a Red Sox fan, to be honest. Um, I go there in a full Red Sox gear, head to toe. I say, bring it on. I've never had any <laughs> problems there. I have never had any problems there. So, uh, like well, you said, the staff, the staff. It was one one time we went there, and it was a 15 inning game, and A Rod walked it off in the bottom of the 15th, and we were chummy. We were talking with the uh, usher in our section because I think we were the only people left there by the end. And when A Rod hit that home run, he turned around and he said, "Get the f out." <laughs> <laughs> in the nicest way possible but <laughs> oh man <laughs> that's funny uh, uh I th but he was laughing as he said it so <laughs> there's there's there is something to be said for the yankee fan and and i i recall we did a a, a podcast once um where <clears throat> i asked i i think we were doing like a bunch of random questions and one of the questions was like which is the fan base that you dislike the most and yeah. across the board, all of us said the Yankees. <laughs> but you know that there, there's there are a few spots that have the traditions that the Yankees do, like the roll call. Yeah, like the roll call is unique unto itself. Absolutely. Where where you know they will call out somebody's name in, in, until they wave. Like they'll call Aaron Judge's name, you know, with the claps or whatever, and until Aaron Judge waves, and then they move yep. on to the next guy. That's right. And, Go right, to, that's, right around the, the diamond. That's part of Yankee Stadium. Uh, the old timers game. I, had I was no going to mention that. Yes. How big. I had no idea how big the old timers game was until I read uh, Jim Bouton's ball four. Because part of his tell all book. Um, well, in re-releases, like he, he would add chapters, ball five, ball right. six, whatever. And so, you know, he did this big tell all and, you know, he'd like pull back the curtain on all the debauchery that was happening in major league baseball. He ended up being blackballed from the, uh, from the old timers game uh, at Yankee stadium for years. Mm -hmm. And this was such a huge deal. I had no idea how big a deal it was up to the point where the only thing that got him back is his son took out a full page in the New York times and wrote this big, huge article on, how the Yankees were were doing his dad wrong. It, it's quite a quite an amazing story, actually. That that is. Um, um, they just had Old Timers Day not long before we're recording this, and the big controversy was David Wells covering up the the Nike <laughs> uh, Nike logo <laughs> on on the jersey. So yeah, Old Timers Day at Yankee Stadium is nothing nothing like it, and. You know, for the longest time, no other team could have brought back the cavalcade of stars that the Yankees have. Yeah. You know, funny thing about the Yankees, every spring training, they're in danger of running out of numbers. Ah. Because, because they have retired so many numbers because they've had just so many legendary names in baseball history that pretty soon, I guess, I don't know if they're going to have to, like, unretire numbers or start with triple digits. or uh, No single or digits numbers. left. They have none. Well, isn't there one number left? Zero. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then it, one of the things that was interesting is, um, so it is the progression. So Mantle, when Mantle came in, he was given the first number that he wore, six. Right. Because Ruth was three, Garrick was yep. four, Dimaggio was five. Dimaggio five. He was the next guy. Yep. And and that was tough for him. And he wanted out of that. Now, yeah. of course, it's since been retired because Joe Torre was six, and I think Rizzuto was six too. Uh, but Mantle seven, uh Barra eight, Roger Maris nine, you know, and so on and so on and so on. Yeah, it's it's just the history is just incredible. Love them or hate them. <laughs> you gotta respect them, right? So that is our look at Yankee Stadium, part three.
Hope you enjoyed joining us for this podcast, and we hope to see you again on the road real soon. Cheers. Cheers.